good. So, TVB, you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. But, I don't know. But? Do they have their headsets <laughs> on? All right, frustration doesn't have it. But I believe Igers is going to wreck him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, th I think Igers is really stable in this matchup, even though he doesn't sound very confident. Because he's going through the motions every single time with, um, with the same kind of style that he's playing, you know. And it's been working out for him. Mm. It hasn't really much failed. It hasn't really much slipped up. Like, you don't see a Protoss player who's just smashing his play style. So I think, you know, he's familiar with the style he plays. And no matter what the Protoss player does, I think Igas' mechanics are going to shine through it. Yeah, I think it's quite possible that he takes a win here. I mean, uh, yeah. oh, this just look at him stroking yeah. his beard. <laughs> Glorious. It gives him extra power. Yeah, um, but I did stroke it today too. You, you did? Yeah. How did it feel? Was it Great. glorious? Yeah. yeah. Do you I, reckon he I puts condition it, in? I lad it and I have yet to lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you need a bit of good luck, yeah, you know where to go. But um, yeah, no, he's he has indeed been stable, and I guess notoriously in the past has been having troubles against Protoss, even people that you would expect him to win against, you know, he gets caught out and I think he's finally ironed that out of his play. It looks like he's finally where he should be against Protoss. So without further ado, let's hop into our first map here. It's going to be King Sejong Station. And in the bottom right hand corner, spawning as a blue Terran, give it up for Igus. <laughs> and his opponent in the top left, spawning in the red. He just came off of a sick win. Let's hope he's not too tired. It's frustration. Yeah, that's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I have no idea what was just said, but uh, sure, yeah. buddy. <laughs> We've got a barbarian in the crowd. I love this crowd. Yeah. yeah. Very it's international for sure. So yeah. things looking pretty standard. Frustrated. Oh, frustrated. Frustration <laughs> doesn't decide to just proxy. Uh, uh, proxy Arax, but I guess, yeah, he does. Yeah, so he's doing the exact same thing as what yeah. he did the Vision. I wonder if uh, Frustration actually saw the match against... Who was that he played? Oh my god, I've already Pigeon. Gotten. Pigeon, yeah, that's yeah. Pigeon. That's true. Of course, it wasn't even that long ago. You, yeah. You've got a good memory. I'm glad someone does. Um, so yeah, this is the same thing that was done against Pigeon, so if he saw that match, it might be in the back of his mind, but... Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's, it's not the m strangest thing you'll see on this map either. You know, this is like one of the most obvious maps to do this sort of strategy on. So surely, I mean, no doubt he's come across this before, but surely he's, he's thinking about it at least a little bit. Yeah, um, for the viewers that weren't yeah. here before, once again, this is the kind of strat that just abuses the map dynamics, that there's this small little cliff at the edge of your base, um, and towards the Protoss, is towards the bottom of the base, and it's easy for the Reaper to just climb up the cliff, and easily maneuver around the bases. So this is why a lot of Terrans like to go on this map like a proxy reaper and try to just abuse that dynamic and try to get a bit of harass done in the early game. Yeah, well, let's see if he can get any damage done here. Gas is a mining, Reaper is a making, so only time will tell whether or not he's going to be able to pick off any probe kills. It does require a decent amount of micro from the Protoss yep. to make sure that those probes don't uh, get picked off too much. And, uh, of course, once some units are out, once it's got Mothership Core, things get a lot easier, but there is quite a bit of time before those units can help him out here. I like that he's going for the Zealot now, because the Zealot, if he lets it finish, like if he sees the Reaper, he's going to let it finish, and the Zealot can buffer against the Reapers before the, before the Reaper goes onto the probes, which buys him a lot of time to get his Mothership Core out and hopefully um, defend versus the Reapers without much probe losses. And you can see he's migrating pretty well here. Needs yep. to keep it up. Oh, he's going to lose one. Ooh. And is he going to get two? Get a second. It's Ow. tricky. He doesn't want to get too far yeah, into that two. probe line because the citizen's arrest oh. is possible. Oh, is he going to get a is third? Not looking too good here. Oh, this has already done so much damage. Yeah, you. Fourth oh, one. Oh, fourth dear. Fourth already. This is not the start of the game that uh, Frustration envisioned, I'm sure. Finally, has to get out of there with the Mothership Core yeah, coming in. The second Reaper's here. Pulling the Mothership Core out of position. In fact, no. Frustration, yeah. too smart for that one. As well. He as well as Pigeon both smartly pulled the Mothership Core back, but he's not focusing on his Mothership Core there. was kind of uh, focused on the Stalker, trying to walk him into position, while well, the mother Mothership Core didn't really uh, attack there. And behind this, I guess already going for his uh, Command Center. And you can see the difference between Frustration and Pigeon's defense. Frustration is already two probes behind of Igus. That is a huge deal because he's trying to chrono boost out uh, probes, still on one nexus, and you know, 
Igus has mules and his economy is already ways ahead of frustration. Yeah, absolutely. We've got those two extra gates coming down and Igus sees everything with those two Reapers coming back in yeah. for another scout. Igus actually producing ma Marines from his racks over there for a little bit and then sending them home before coming into... Is he going to block with his racks? Well, oh, okay. Um, don't think he'll make it in time. Actually, frustration doesn't have any money, does he? Oh, there we go. Okay, Nexus went down. Never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but I guess he's grabbing that extra bunker, considering that he's seen the three gates in the Protoss base, doesn't want to take any risks. Yeah, second bunker is really key here. Like, a uh, three gate can still break through one bunker. And, you know, I don't think this is going to be on the aggression for frustration. I don't, like, it wouldn't deal much damage in that case. So I don't think it would be wise for him to push across with three gates, especially when mm. two bunkers are already up. He might, you know, he really needs to think of what he's going to transition into as soon as possible. I would say Robo would th be the best bet, so you can really get uh, Colossi out and defend versus the next push that Argus is going to put on. And you see yeah. Robo going down right here. Yeah, I think you heard. You clears the racks out of the way first. It's not even burning there, not yet. So we uh, unfortunately will yeah, have that to come in again if he wants to. set it on fire before he lets it go. Yeah, yeah. well, Reaper's still doing a great job scouting around the map for Argus making sure that there's no probes anywhere, no pylons that he didn't know about. I mean, he already picked off the only probe that got out on the map. Um, so Frustration's also playing it a bit in the dark himself. He can probably assume that Argus is playing pretty straight up from here, but it's always good to have yeah. that extra information. Well, you normally don't see this. Like, you always see the, uh, the Protoss having more workers than the Terran. Mm. And you can see that after Frustration has lost so many probes, he still isn't chrono boosting enough into his, uh, into his workers uh, because well, he's still behind on workers, and yeah. Igus has mules, so he's Ooh. even more ahead than what the worker count shows you. Yeah, he's, he's looking really good already. And uh, notice he got a missile turret right in the front of his natural there. <laughs> We've gotten a good demonstration of frustrations likes for DTs, so um, I think uh, he generally actually skips that, I think. So it's, yeah. it's good that he's kept that in mind and gone, oh, all right, maybe I should just Yeah, when you're ahead, you just really want to think about what can my opponent do yeah. to kill me? in any sort of situation right now. Absolutely. So he's being just very careful with that, just not allowing frustration to get ahead in any kind of gimmicky situation, mm. such as DTs or oracles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and uh, look at this scouting again, back into frustration's base. Literally everything he's done so far has been seen by Iga. So he's gonna be yeah. feeling so comfortable at this point in time. And four sentries out. I really don't like such a high sentry count when it comes to Protoss, because you need that gas for new tech. And this is actually why his uh, robotics facility, like the Colossus Bay, is so late, because he doesn't have that gas. Now he puts it down, I believe, does yep. he? No, not yet. He's oh, still he's making immortals. Oh, yeah. he might actually, what he's doing might look like a uh, immortal bus right here. Might be trying to go for a two base Ooh, with rough. immortals and Colossus. Yeah, that might be the flavor of the day for frustration here. I mean, he's got to do something. The question is what and what will actually work because I guess it's so ahead. Yeah. He's going to head out with this um, squadron of Marines while his Stim and plus one gets very close to completion. In fact, Stim just finishing then. Um, Add-ons finally coming in on those racks. He skipped out on them for a little while. We're just continuing to make Marines off each of those. Um, and as he takes his third, his production will really, really start to kick in after this push. So Frustration will see it coming. He's going to have to force fill pretty nicely. Doesn't have that many units out here. Yeah, you finally see the Colossus Bay coming down and put another charge on a couple of Marines. Really good force field segmenting all the Marines here and he's going to pick a good chunk of them off. Yeah, very good nice. Good job here. That's the first step to coming back in this game for sure. Alrighty, and uh, I guess he's going to head home with those Marines. He didn't lose too much, but uh, of course he would have loved to do a bit more damage there. And it looks like yeah. Frustration heading towards taking that third base. Um, is he actually going to move out on the map? I'm not sure. W would he actually be able to do anything serious to Argus at this point? Nah, I think he's just pushing up to, to make sure the group of units before aren't still there. So if they were, he could probably pick them off again. And I think in that engagement, Argus could have better uh, sniped the sentries mm. for sure. Could have targeted them down and you know his follow-up push would be just so much yeah. more stronger. And yeah, Colossus on the way. Yeah, and right in line with the combat shields is this next attack coming. He's going to knock down these rocks first. I'm not sure if Frustration's caught wind of that just yet. A single Marine distracting that army for just a moment. It looks like it's heading back in here now, so Frustration knows about it. 
Yeah. But medevacs are in play, so he doesn't actually have to attack right here. He could go up and drop, but it looks like that's in the back of Frustration's mind as well. He slips oh. past the force fields, and he doesn't actually have any left. And there you see it. Target's down two sentry, lifts up, and moves home. This, even just breaking down the rocks, that's already a win for Argus, because he can use that as a later um, pathway to form aggression. So yeah. right now it's all about frustration defending here because he doesn't have the capabilities nor the army to go for aggression. So he has to keep defending, hoping that Igos will be throwing away mm. units mindlessly, which I highly doubt he's going to do. Goes Academy on the way, and I'm, I won't be surprised if he does go for like a SCP pool yeah. once again with three goes. Yeah, we've already seen a couple of times from him, and... Well, as I said earlier, you know, he just kind of goes all in with SUVs because he doesn't know how to play late game against Protoss. And in this case, you know, it, it may not go to a late game scenario, but it's better to just oh, end it wow. whenever you can. Eight Marauders. He chooses eight Marauders in the two Medivacs to easily target down that Nexus. And look how quick that yeah. one is falling. And he's killing a third. I guess ahead Ooh. by one base now. And even in the natural, still aggression going on. He's targeting the Nexus here once again. Almost got the mothership coin. I think he's gonna get that. Oh, oh it's falling! It's falling! I oh, think he's gonna save just it. Just runs now. out. Yeah. Oh, close one. Really but clutch there. It's pretty uh, softened up. And as you said, since that pathway is now opened up on the left hand side, I guess can come back in there again and try and snipe it a second time. But yep. as we know, the big push is gonna be coming eventually. We've got the DT shrine finishing up, by the way, for frustration. So that's certainly a way you can get back into the game. One missile turret isn't really gonna do anything because there's not necessarily units there to defend. Of course, a third looking pretty naked as well in terms of detection. So that's certainly one way to get back into There's a couple of uh, proxy pawns down the bottom left-hand side of the map for those yep. warp-ins too. DT Shrine just finished, so he's going to warp one or two in, try to get some harassment done, and try to slow down this push coming out from Argus. You know, if you diminish the SCV count, maybe that's a few less SCVs he's going to pull along. Yep. Very Ooh, I'm true, actually pretty right? surprised. He's getting 2-2 two, two here, so it doesn't look like he's going for yeah. uh, what he normally does. As you heard in the interviews before, he did say, you know, if I'm going for an SCV pool, I don't need that 2-2. Two, two. But he's, yeah. he's choosing to go for the 2-2 two, two this game. So, which may reckon that mm. he's trying to go for a late game, maybe? Well, he, he, he may not feel like he needs to SCV pool because he's got such a good start in this game. But hold that thought, engagement coming in. He could actually... Close the distance between that Colossus and take it down. It does fall very quickly. Vikings in here as well. And there's just nothing left on the ground. The DT is still doing a bit of work behind this. Racking up some SCV kills. GG. It's too much. Great target firing from Igus in, uh, in the last moments of that game. And, you know, DT just didn't do enough. It does take that first game pretty convincingly. Yeah, that was uh, pretty short and sweet. A really great start to the game for Igus. Yeah. And that uh, looks like it's what really did it for him there. So, yeah, not too much we can say about from that. Um, yeah, I guess that, frustration that Reaper just did too much damage, yeah. for sure. Wasn't so able to minimize the damage at like all. Like, once you throw off a, a Protoss build, it's really hard for them to, for many Protosses, to react and kind of uh, move their builds back mm -hmm. because Protoss is so build-oriented. It's really hard to just go by, like, for example, for Zerg, you got your injects to try to um, build dro mass drones, and then after that you can mass units again. So your timing doesn't really get thrown off too much, but for Protoss, every, every single building comes down to a specific timing. So it's really hard for the Protoss to kind of snap back and try to move the game again from there. Yeah, I think Frustration um, did a reasonable move. I mean, you said going for Colossus would be a good way to go. And so he went for that, but he felt like he needed to do something more. Went for the DTs. Didn't really work out because it came at the same yeah. time as Igus really started to put the aggression onto him. Attack in multiple locations, and yeah. from there it kind of fell apart. But, but then he already had way too much units. Like, yeah. splitting the army up wasn't an option, so he had to only defend his natural mm. and couldn't defend his third. But yeah, game has started.